Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my lab. I'm very happy to have you here. Are you ready to learn? Yeah. Are you ready to have fun? Yeah. Well, you know, we must do the experiments in a very safe way. That's why I put my goggles to protect my eyes from potential damage. I also, before I did that experiment, I also want you to see that we have a fire extinguisher ready to be used just in case something goes out of control. We're not planning on anything going out of control, but it's a safety measure that we are taking. Now, you notice that the balloon that I brought in had in it a gas lighter than air. That gas also exploded when I put the flame to it. Some gases burn and some other gases don't burn. But what we like to do in science whenever we do an experiment is repeat the experiment. And that's what we're going to do now. But instead of using this as a lighter, I'm going to use a gas called natural gas in this torch as the way by which I'm going to ignite the balloon. So we've got another green balloon. And what we're going to do is repeat the experiment in the dark. So here we go. Watch and see. Now with the lights up, with the lights up, you were able to see that experiment somewhat differently in the dark than it was with the lights on. Let's take a look at that last experiment in slow motion. So watch the monitor. There's the balloon. Oops, there's the flame, actually, not just the balloon. And that is the replay in slow motion. Now, that balloon had in it hydrogen gas. Let's move on and do an experiment with this yellow balloon that has in it a gas lighter than air. So I'll put the torch to it. Whoops, what happened? What do you mean nothing? <laughs> the balloon popped, but there was no flame, right? That's because the gas in that balloon is helium. And helium is one of the gases that does not burn. Now, we've learned so far that some gases burn and some gases don't burn. Some gases, like hydrogen, burn and release energy in the form of light, which is what we saw, but also release energy in the form of sound, which is what we heard. Before doing the rest of the experiments with the balloons, I'd like for each of us to obey the safety rules and regulations by protecting our ears from potential damage by taking two, the two fingers and putting them in our ears like this so that we protect our ears from potential damage. I can't do that and do the experiment at the same time. So I have <coughs> brought with me some earplugs. So I'm going to put the earplugs, and I'd like to ask you to protect your ears very, very carefully. If you can hear the sound of my voice, that means your ears are not well protected. I can't hear you, but I see you smiling. That means you heard what I said. So please protect your ears as we go to the next set of balloons and put the torch to this one. That balloon had in it a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. In other words, there was much more oxygen available for the hydrogen to combine with in that very, very loud explosion. Let's repeat that last experiment, but let's repeat it in the dark. So first, let's put our earplugs in. You protect your ears very well. We'll turn the lights down and repeat the experiment in the dark. We learn more about experiments that release energy in the form of light if we do them in the dark. Let's take a look at this last experiment in slow motion. Watch the monitor, and you will see the light coming up to the, there's the torch coming up to the balloon. You won't hear any sound. The flame will hit the balloon, and there, very fast reaction, very fast explosion. Well. Throughout the years that I have had the privilege of presenting this very special program to you and to others on public television, I've had also the privilege of working with some very talented people. 
And I would like for you now to welcome one of my colleagues who has been with me for almost 25 years. That's Dr. Rodney Schreiner. Rod? What do we have here? Well, because this is your 25th anniversary, I thought I'd bring out some uh, things to, uh, to improve the celebration. All right. And nothing improves the celebration like ice cream. I agree. So I brought the ingredients for, for ice, cream. ice cream. OK. Cream, strawberry, yes. preserves, Whoa. vanilla, Whoa. sugar, sugar. Okay. eggs. eggs. And, and a bowl. And a bowl. All right. And uh, you want me to help with this? Yes. Or? Okay. Sh what shall I do? You can open the cream and put it in the bowl. Open the cream and put it in the bowl. All right. It says, thank you for selecting. Oh, I won't read the brand here. <laughs> Just to open. All right. I open this and, and put it in the it bowl. All, in. all right. I can do that. I see you have your goggles on. Well. So that's good. Yes. You never know. <laughs> Making ice cream might be hazardous. Hey, that's a nifty shirt. Can I get one like that? Maybe. 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 Oh, all right. But this okay. one's mine. You can't oh. have it. Okay, that's yours. What do I do next? Add the uh, half and half. Half and, and half. I'll put the sugar in. Okay. Does it make any difference how um, well you mix this or what? Well, I need to stir it to dissolve the sugar. All right. This is rich ice cream, it sounds. Well, looks nothing good. but the best for right. your 25th. What do I do next? Well, we're going to need some eggs in here, eggs. too. I so, got the eggs. so break the eggs break and uh, the eggs. Okay. mix them together. Okay. Mix them together. Do I need an instrument to mix them together? Oh, yes. yes, you got it right here. Okay, fine, I'll do that. What's this thing called? A whisk. A whisk. And just Whisk, whisk, whisk it around a little bit, right? Okay. Not, How much? Not common laboratory apparatus. All right. Well, okay, you know, that looks that looks good. Now you can good. pour the eggs into, into pour the this eggs mixture, in there. and uh, I'll take the whisk from you. Take the whisk. You need the whisk. All right. Yes. So now we have the main ingredients for ice cream, the basic mixture. Yes. Now we need to flavor it. All right. So I brought the vanilla flavoring. Yes. How much should I put? Just dump it in? Uh, no, don't, don't, don't. This is a laboratory. We have to measure. Measure and what, how much should I measure? I have uh, measuring devices One here. tablespoon. That's this big one. That's the big one. All right. I know you're used to uh, metric units. That's yes. 15 milliliters. 15 milliliters, all right. What's next? And because this is a very special occasion, I want more than just vanilla ice cream. Let's add the strawberries to it. Ah, that's what the strawberries are for. And you even brought a spoon. That's great. Now, is this going to be a real ice cream? I mean, how are we going to do this? Or is, this, is it ready to be? Well, I'm counting on you to have something very cold in your laboratory that we can use to freeze this. Something very cold? Yes. I have lots of cold things. I have something you, really, really you cold. You usually do have cold it's things. It's called liquid nitrogen. Will that do? Uh, that's cold. That's All right. cold. All right. Oh. I've got the liquid nitrogen right here. It's but, but this is really cold. It's minus 196 degrees Celsius. Well, that should do it. That should that do it? should do it. <laughs> OK. So combine the ice cream mix. Yeah. Get all these strawberries in here. Strawberries, that's good, yeah. OK. Now what do I do? Pour the liquid nitrogen Pour into the Pour the liquid nitrogen. That's going to really freeze it. That's the idea. Oh. Are you sure this is going to be edible? Oh, absolutely. Nothing but the best ingredients. All right. Oh, it's getting stiff. Getting stiff, okay. More than stiff. It's getting hard is what's happening. Ooh. It's, uh... Oh, boy. Getting, uh, very hard. Well, when, when? It's extremely hard. It's very hard, but it's also cold, I bet you. Uh, minus 196, you said. Right, Celsius, I, uh, right. I, uh, so I don't think I'd want to eat it when it's quite 
that cold. Not this cold. So no. what should we do then? I, I think I'll take it back and put it in the refrigerator and let it warm up. But let it. <laughs> but we will get it back, right? Oh yes. Oh okay. We'll bring it back. Well, thank you very much, Rod. Well, the next experiment that I'm going to do is with another cold substance. It's not as cold as liquid nitrogen. This substance is called dry ice. It's actually solid carbon dioxide. The temperature of this solid is minus 78 degrees Celsius. I will use the gloves to protect my hands from, from frostbite. Although these are garden variety gloves, they're not very well insulated. I will not squeeze this or hold it very tightly. Just pick it up and put a chunk of dry ice on the tabletop. Dry ice changes from being a solid to a gas directly. In other words, it doesn't melt. Substances that do that undergo a process we call sublimation. There is gas coming off now from the dry ice, but we can't see it. What I'm going to do next is an experiment with the dry ice to show that the sublimation is taking place, actually show a few other things too. So I'd like you to focus your attention on this part of the table here where I have in front of me some cylinders. These are cylinders that have different colored liquids in them. How many cylinders do I have? How many? Ten. Ten cylinders. And they as I said, they have different colored liquids in them. And I'm going to put chunks of dry ice in those cylinders in a very special way. And when I get done, you tell me what this special way is. So here we go. What's the special way that I'm doing? Did I put the dry ice in every cylinder? I put it in every other cylinder. Lots of interesting things are happening. You see those bubbles? Those are gas bubbles. Those are carbon dioxide gas bubbles. The carbon dioxide dissolves in the water and forms carbonated water. We all know about carbonated water because we drink carbonated beverages. And carbonated beverages have in them car carbonic acid. You also notice that something else very interesting is happening. Lots of things are happening that are interesting, right? There is what? A color change that's taking place, right? What I have here are some dyes that change color as a chemical reaction takes place. They indicate to us that a chemical reaction has taken place. They're called indicators. And the carbonic acid is combining with the different chemicals that are in there, and they each have their own characteristic colors depending on whether they're acids or bases. You also notice that coming off the top of those cylinders, is something, what does this look like, that stuff that's coming up? It looks like foam, but it's not foam. What does it really look like? No, steam is invisible. You can't see steam. It, it, it looks like fog. You're right. And you know what fog is? Fog is condensed water vapor. The water vapor is condensing on the carbon dioxide that's coming out from the tube, from the cylinders. And you notice that the fog is moving in a downward direction telling us that carbon dioxide is heavier than air. So what I want to do next is an experiment with more dry ice. And I need some hot water. I don't have any hot water down here. Could someone please bring me some hot water, please? Oh, thank you, Bucky. And welcome to my lab, Bucky. So happy to see you here. You are very, very kind to come to my special silver anniversary. I know you've been coming every year. You're one of the best students I've had in my class. You're a very, very good student. And I know you are because you have your eye protection. Bucky is wearing goggles. Yes, so do I, yes. And I know you learned that from me. That's very good, Bucky. I know you're getting ready for final exams, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> I hope you are. I hope you are. I know this is a good, uh, yes, yes. You'll do well on the finals, especially if you study for them. Well, let me do the experiment, Bucky, that you brought me the hot boiling water uh, for. This experiment I'll do in this uh, empty dish pan. It's empty except for air. And what I'll do is I'll pour the water, the hot water, into the dish pan. You see anything coming off the top? Steam. Now, remember, steam is invisible. That's not steam. You, it's condensed water vapor. You know, on a very cold day, when you blow your breath on your hand, don't tell me you see steam. You're seeing condensed water vapor. Well, here's the experiment, Bucky, that we're going to do here. We're going to take some 
lots of dry ice, not just some dry ice, and pour it into this hot boiling water. You like that? This is how they make fog in the movies sometimes. They take hot boiling water, add dry ice to it. You notice once again that the fog is moving in a downward direction. That's because carbon dioxide is heavier than air. So, you like that experiment, Becky? Yes, I'm glad that you like it. I have a lot of other experiments that I think you will like, and I would like to ask you, I know you have to study for your finals, but can you stay for the rest of the show? Do you want Bucky to stay? Yeah. All right, Bucky. I've got a special seat saved for you right over there. All right, Bucky. Make yourself comfortable and keep those goggles on. All right. Let's uh, <clears throat> see if we can, in the next uh, a few moments, do some of the favorite experiments that I've done in previous programs. And I get a lot of mail about the experiments. I wish I could repeat all of them. But I'm going to just do a couple uh, right now very quickly. The first one has to do with reaching to my wallet and seeing what I have in my wallet. Oops, I, have, I see that I have a dollar bill in my wallet. I'm going to take this dollar bill and put it in the flame. And did you see that? Was that too fast? Well, you know what we should do. What we always do is repeat the experiment. So I'll do it now more slowly. I'll take what looks like a dollar bill. It's not a real dollar bill. It's a phony dollar bill. It's a fake dollar bill. This dollar bill, this fake dollar bill, has been made of paper that has been especially treated so that when it burns, it doesn't leave any ash behind. So let's repeat the experiment now. Go to the flame. And as soon as it touches it, there, it disappears into thin air. OK. I'm glad, I'm glad you like that. Well, let me see what else you have, what, what, what else I have in my um, Well, I have a $20 bill. And this is a real $20 bill. You suppose I can do the same thing as I did with that? No, no. Well, I'll tell you what. What, what I want to do is take this jar that has in it a clear and colorless liquid. What do you suppose this liquid is? What does it look like? It looks like water, so let's see um, what happens when I take the $20 bill. I just soak it in this liquid. I have a pair of tongs here to help me fish it out. I'll soak it in and fish it out. You see it's dripping like any wet object would or does. And I take this to the flame, and there's a $20 bill on fire. Or is it? You did see a flame, right? $20 bill is intact. So could this liquid be water? No. Oh. This liquid, I will tell you what this liquid is. This is a mixture of something we call rubbing alcohol and water. This is a 50% mixture. Rubbing alcohol you can get in the drugstore, and water you can get anywhere. Um, and it's the alcohol that was burning. That flame that we saw was from the burning of the alcohol. And this experiment tells us that alcohol, this alcohol, burns at a temperature lower then the temperature at which the paper from which this $20 bill is made. Well, this is a good $20 bill. I'm going to put it back in my wallet before something else happens to it. I'll close this jar and move on to do another experiment that we've done before, and a lot of people like it. This experiment, let's see, I need to uh, connect the hose to the gas jet so I can then light the burner and take a match, light the burner. There is a lit burner before us. And what I'm going to do is take out of this small squeeze bottle a powder and squeeze it into the flame. Isn't that neat? <laughs> this powder is called lycopodium powder. It's a finely divided powder. It's dust, almost dust. And you know sometimes we hear about uh, explosions, dust explosions that happen in silos. That's because the corn or whatever else is being stored in the silo changes. Some of it changes into dust, and it catches on fire and 
very, very rapidly, just like uh, this one did. What I'd like to do now is another experiment. But to help me do this experiment, I'd like to call on one of our expert lecture demonstrators, Fred Jurgen. So Fred, won't you please come out? Come out. Well, I've got a big, long glass tube here that's filled with a mixture of colorless gases. And there's a little bit of water in there, too. You might be able to see some water droplets on the inside of the tube. And the experiment that we're going to do involves finding out whether the gases that are in here will put out a burning match or whether they will allow the match to continue to burn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up here on the step stool. And then I'm going to light the match. And then I'm going to ask the, uh, that the lights be turned out. And we're going to drop this burning match down into this tube and see what happens. Everybody ready? Yeah. Here we go. Wow. Well, it's, it's, it's very clear that uh, the match has gone out, right? But we had quite a flame uh, in the process. And one of the products of the reaction that went on is the element sulfur. And that's why this yellow coating is on the inside of this tube now. Before you, it wasn't yellow. Sulfur is a yellow element. And before, it was present in a combined form so that you couldn't see its color. But now you can see the color of the element sulfur. So I'm going to take this away and clean it up now, because the sulfur really sticks to the glass if you don't clean it out quickly. So we'll see you. Thank you, Fred. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's take a quick look at this last experiment in slow motion. So watch the monitor. And you won't hear the sound again. There's the match that Fred is holding. It's being dropped. And there's that big flame. And you see Fred trying to get out of the way there. <laughs> Now, uh, what I would like to um, see and check out on to see is if the, if the ice cream is ready. Oh, is the yeah, it's ready. Ice Bring cream is ready? Bring it in right now. OK. Here we are. Here's the ice cream. Oh, thank you. And uh, You've here's got some bowls. Some, and there's some bowls yeah, and yeah. some other things. Let so me set these. Uh, yeah, let's yeah. put those what, what, What's this that you've got here? That's another interesting and colorful set of beakers. Well, yeah, I've, I was putting together some beakers to make some of the chemicals. And uh, I was stirring it around. And I noticed that when I was stirring it, I heard sort of a tone. And um, so I started messing around with beakers and just putting different amounts of water in them to see if I could make anything that sounded interesting rather than just explosions and all that kind of stuff. You know. So here's what I set up. And I'd like you to listen very carefully and see if you can tell what's going on here. This is for Bucky and for the Hall of Fame Bowl, right? very much, Fred. And of course, the ice cream is ready. And here it is. And let's take some out and put it in this uh, bowl. And I would like the person to try it for the first time to be Elizabeth. So I'll bring it over to Elizabeth, see if Elizabeth is willing to try it. Are you willing to try it? Yeah. All right, here you go. What does it taste like? It's good. It's good. What flavor is it? Strawberry. Of course, it's strawberry. Thank you, Elizabeth. Enjoy the rest of it. OK. I want to thank you all and urge you to do science and other things that are worthwhile in life. But don't forget, no matter what you do, science is fun. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.